You're listening to the Poco a Poco podcast, sponsored by Spirit Juice Studios. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey everybody. This is Father Mark Mary. Father Angelus here. And Father Innocent. And this is the Poco a Poco podcast. Yes, sure so is. We have, <laughs> we have our guest with us. We'll just go to get after it, Father Innocent. Introduce our guest. I am so excited. Whoa, I'm spiking the mic. You I'm, always spike. That's kind just of honest and loud. I want to introduce a great friend of ours, a great friend of the Friars, known her for three years, met at a retreat, and she's been a great friend walking with a lot of our young men in formation, a lot of Friars, and her name is Jackie Mulligan from the Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jackie. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. This is um, it's an answered prayer, and God is good. Jackie, we need a little feminine touch in our lives. Oh, I'm happy I could. <laughs> it's I important could. on this podcast in particular. Actually, we have a lot of feminine influence in this podcast. Just run it out there. <laughs> we have all sorts of groups that are excited about the Poco Poco podcast, and most of them are females. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to all of our audience for, because Father Angel and Father Innocent both have cough drops in. <laughs> They decided that'd be a good idea. Let's throw a hard candy into it, my mouth. Before it's better we start that I do recording. that rather than cough. Just so you know, his cough is back, bro. It is. I don't know if it is better. We'll be. We'll let the audience be the judge of that. So, <laughs> Jackie, Jackie's part of the family, basically the, the Friar family. I hope you feel that. I totally feel that. Yeah. I'm at, I feel very at home right now. Which is so. It's like we don't have a problem just bantering back and forth while <laughs> you're being dignified in the room. Um, <laughs> So, Jackie, what's the deal? You were on Abiding Together's podcast before ours. Yeah, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, well, they beat you. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. Um, you knew us longer, right? I, yeah, yeah, I was I let's talk I about that. Like, there was like a, I feel a connection. Like, we've been on a journey, and I think just to hear, like, you didn't even tell me. I'd hear, like, <laughs> through back channels that you were on their podcast. No, once I give my word for confidentiality, I've got to stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> but you gave us a lot of love, I felt like. I oh, felt absolutely. like the Friars were, were well represented. <laughs> there would be no reform, really, uh, without the Friars. And that's the truth. Father I, th- I, felt, knows the, it. I felt the love. Yeah, I felt the there's, love. The, there's major love here. Before, So can you just give a, a super kind of quick, because we're going to get into it a lot more as yeah. we go along, like 90 second to two minute introduction to who you are and what you do? Sure, yeah. So, as you mentioned, I'm Jackie Mulligan. I'm the founder of Reform Wellness, and it's um, the first wellness program of its kind to merge faith and functional health together. So, um, we look at the whole person when we're working with people. We look at the state of their body and the soul together. And um, it started with my own journey of health and realizing that um, focusing on nutrition and sleep and stress were really beneficial. Um, But... I needed to uh, invite Christ into all areas of my life and not compartmentalize him into one area. And so um, now I have a practice um, and a wonderful team. Um, Then we work with people from all over the world, from all different walks of life and faith. And um, we help them to live um, centered on Christ, but within uh, all aspects of their well-being. And so um, we work with, as you know, religious and priests, um, but we also work with um, lay people and, um, and they are really come from, from all different kinds of backgrounds and just help them find the root cause of their, their health issues. So that's looking at the root cause of maybe what's physically um, m- holding them back from being well um, or spiritually or mentally, emotionally. So, yeah. And, and honestly, it's, it's, um, it's a, a gift and a ministry. I don't even know if I, w- I want to say a business because it's not. It's, it's, it's a total ministry. Um, it's like a mission. Able- yeah, it is. It is in a, in a sense. And, um, and starting with you guys, I mean, it was really Father Innocent who, who uh, kind of started this journey with me. Um, I started in California prior to this with my own wellness practice, but it was coming back here and, and really integrating in New York with the faith um, even more that uh, it bloomed in the way that it has. And Father Innocent, how did you meet Jackie or what was, can you just like a little bit of like how you met her and then kind of what she was doing at the beginning? Yeah. So we met at a retreat in Long Island, right? With Father yeah. Joe, we went there, uh, the friars were there. It was um, a snowy day like snow, this. Oh yeah. And, and, uh, and we just, uh, we met and we, we, you were on the kind of the team there. And, uh, and to be honest, it was, it was personal at the beginning, right? I was, my, my life was a wreck. I was at the shelter. I was, I had, I had come back from Haiti and had two, like just got sick and had a lot of two bacterial infections and I think I'll probably tell more of my witness about this later, but, and, uh, she, we were just talking and she's like, yeah, I'm a functional nutritionist. I'm like, can I ask you a few questions? <laughs> like I wasn't sleeping. I was stressed. Like I lost a lot of weight mm-hmm. and I didn't know that like I had all these struggles. And so we set up a call 
and then from there, really, the rest was, uh, you started helping me personally, but I, I had the, I had the experience early on that this was, this was addressing kind of my, my deeper desires to look at my whole life. As friars, I think we just look at kind of the spiritual life, like, I'm good, I show up, here's, here's what's going on, you know, like, and, but I had, to, I had, I needed to look at my whole life and kind of reboot. And I realized that the men I worked with, the young men I work with at the missionary program, but also the, the men at the shelter, like everybody needed an invitation to look at their whole of their life. And so I invited Jackie to come and, and then she kind of followed me here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I invited her to the formation program. And, and so uh, it's just been an incredible journey that way. So it was with the missionaries and the, the men at the shelter or who was the first? It was the missionaries. Missionaries. It was the right. missionaries first. Yeah. And then um, what was just kind of beautiful, I was able to translate it in my care for the, for the men at the shelter. She would come in and, 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 uh, and present to the missionaries. But um, I just helped a lot of the, the homeless men too, because again, it was a holistic kind of an invitation. Right. And just a little background. So we have a homeless shelter in the South Bronx called St. Anthony Shelter for Renewal. And we have about, what is it? Usually about a half dozen uh, young men in their 20s who we call yep. the Franciscan missionaries of the renewal. And they, they live on one of the upper floors of the shelter and they have a time of formation as well and they help us make that work of God possible. So it's it's rocking, it's sweet. It's we rocking, got, it's sweet, yeah. We got four alums, four Franciscan missionary alums of postulancy. Um, yeah. We'll see. I want to have a couple of them on here. Talk about the <laughs> desert. That's we'll awesome. see. We'll, we'll see, see about it. They've been we'll throwing that out it. there for a while, but we've been kind of playing a little hard. Yeah, game. yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, they say it kind of joking, you know, but then we'll see if it's actually serious if they get shot. I mean, they have to like, I don't know. They have to be cool. They have to be smooth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not like us. Okay. <laughs> so one. Of, so you. It's a pretty integrated, holistic approach. One thing that's Father Innocent still struggling with is uh, bladder control. <laughs> Could we work on that a little bit? Is there, the, can well, that, does the program address that in any way? So can I just, one that's of the, why you're, sorry, go ahead. One of the past episodes, like very recent ones, we had four, three people, or there's four of us. I had to go to the restroom. It was the end, long day. I was like hydrating. <laughs> I was hydrating. And so I leaned over to Father Mark Mary. I'm like, like, I knew he wasn't going to do this, but I just didn't want to leave. They can handle it. So what he does is that, hey, Father Innocent, like, I'm gone going to the restroom. He's like, hey, Father Innocent, what do you think? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's right, because you're not here because you're in the bathroom. <laughs> like, totally called me out. That's why we changed seats. So now, because we're, we're where we are now, I'm like on the aisle seat and he's at the window seat. <laughs> so he can't, he can't get out. I don't have a problem. I'm just well hydrated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here's what we're going to, here's what's going on. I'm going to kind of cast the big picture vision, if that's all right. Um, and uh, first of all, do you know Spiritual Studios? Do you, you no Spiritual? They make this thing happen. They uh, they're our sponsors. They make the podcast happen, and they're rocking dudes or ro- a whole rocking group. Spiritual. What else is? Um, they've done like all uh, basically all, where our media is that we have a media thing like at all at this point is because of them, and including this. So, <laughs> well, then we're grateful for them. Thanks, Rob. Very <laughs> <great>. <laughs> thanks, Rob. <laughs> thanks, Rob. Jack is grateful. <laughs> all right, listeners, buckle up. Because here we go. Um, what, what, like, I feel like we're kind of getting the season two next phase development of the Poco Book podcast. And maybe the first part was a little bit more of um, kind of getting some of the fundamentals. And I think that's, I think it's beautiful. It's like the, um, the prodigal or the, the rich young man in Mark's gospel, where the rich young man, he comes to Jesus, right? And then he says, okay, like, what do I have, like, what do I have to do? And then Jesus says a few things. And then, and then, um, and then he looks at him and, or he's like, so then the rich young man's like, okay, cool. I'm doing those. Like, I'm doing pretty good. And then the rich, or, and then Jesus looks at the rich young man and he looks at him and he loves him. And I feel like hopefully that's kind of been the experience of the first part of like the first, whatever, 35 to 40 episodes of the podcast is just that our audience feels loved and they feel seen and they feel understood. And they know that it's okay that life's a mess and it's okay. And then none of that, that struggle, none of that stuff defines you. But if you look at the gospel, then he looks at him and he loves him. He establishes this trust. And then he says, okay, if you want to be perfect, if you want to make the next best step, go sell everything you have and come follow me. Um, he looks at him. He loves him. establishes that relationship. And then he says, okay, like, let's, let's, let's see if we can make another step. Because Christianity, certainly, like, the Lord embraces us and accepts us in the mess. But that whole thing, like, he loves us enough to keep bringing us deeper. And so, we, we're just talking about a little bit of, of our own story, uh, talking about, a work of God, this um, this kind of new coffee table book, which again, we'd recommend picking up. Um, 
and and we're gonna be we're kind of going into like we were in mom mode we're going into dad mode a little bit like <laughs> we're going to like from like consoler to coach a little bit as we're we're gonna talk with jackie a little bit on these principles of renewal and some very practical beginning points um as she mentioned runs a group called reform and this is just sort of like we're inviting her in as part of the, the family and a friend just to sort of okay let's 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 talk about this let's cast the vision let's say it is possible and let's give some immediate direction and then especially leading to Lent, Father Innocent's going to take us through um, a series kind of based on the postulants experience, three-week three, three week hardcore, pretty challenging, but breakthrough experience of the guys in the wilderness. And then with Ascension, I'm, I'm publishing a book called um, Habits for Holiness. And that's really the aim of it. It's like, okay, you want to follow Jesus and the world's crazy and you don't know what it's going to look like. We're going we're gonna to walk you through this because our own community has been has been sort of through it. We're going to just get really practical. It's as if like you were going to, like you wanted to get healthy and you were going to have a workout plan. And it's like, here's a workout plan. Here's a diet plan. We're offering that basically for your life and your spiritual life. Sound good? It sounds really good. And I'm really excited about it because I believe that it works if you work it. That's a 12 step. That's a 12 step kind of, of adaptation. But like, we don't, we don't intentionally grow in holiness. It doesn't accidentally happen. And so Jesus looks at us with love and then he says, come follow me. And that's the, that's the tension of the spiritual life is, is absolutely a work of God, but then we got to respond and it just, it works if you work it. If we, if we, if we receive and, and, and dive in and we, and we, and we take kind of like, uh, receive the like intentional steps, guys, we're going to grow in holiness. But if we don't, then you can, like, if you set out kind of like in halfway, half measures, then you can expect that type of result. But if, if you work it and you respond to the grace and you like take these steps, you, there can be serious growth here. Amen. By the way, Andrews, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You weren't ready, ready for this, ready, but, ready. I, but I think you can handle this. <laughs> How's your cough? You're all right? I'm good. He's, he's nicely scarfed I'm trying up. To I am nicely scarfed up. It's <laughs> You're a classy guy. Can very you, Eddie Bauer. You Very Eddie Bauer like. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. See, that's not image is not good for me. <laughs> what do you mean? I want you to notice that I have a plaid scarf and a plaid mask. <laughs> What's up with that? Anyway, you you were going to put me on the spot. Did you put the, we were just decorating for Christmas. Did you put the little runners on the table that Father Innocent took <laughs> yeah, off? Yeah, it was a joke. Oh, <laughs> okay. It wasn't supposed to be something that actually like, hey, look, that looks nice. It looked hideous from the beginning. And I put the runners on there on purpose. And then I want, we're like, waiting for a reaction from him. And you got it. They're like girly points at a runners on the table. I'm like, I, no, yeah, we don't do this. <laughs> like, this is not a thing. That's literally all you have for me is put me on the spot with that. No, that's not <laughs> it. That's not <laughs> it. It just comes to mind. That's my contribution around here. <laughs> so, what? Because the 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 setting off part for this is a little bit of a testimony of our own community and its founding in '87 in the Bronx. Okay. In just a couple of minutes, can you just share that story? And what we're doing is like looking at like here's a really rough situation, but we can enter into it and with the Lord and with intentionality in a life we. You can yeah. follow Jesus in it. Can yeah. you share that a little bit? Yeah, I hope my sharing here. Feel free to <laughs> if there's anything you, if there's anything you say I don't like. I'll just Here's my thing. cover I, up. I think the the our community was invited by the Holy Spirit to begin a renewal because I think Franciscan life got quite comfortable in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Are we on the right spot here? I think so. I okay. mean, I think yeah. Oh, we got we got quite comfortable, and then I think there was a temptation to lose the Franciscan edge, or you lose the reality that God uh, wants to work. In, in grace in my life and wants to, to perfect me in my religious life. I think a, a lot of guys got, yeah, the world's in a tough spot, so it distracts us. And so we become very worldly very quick. And then we, we they lost the edge. The Franciscans lost the, the edge in that particular time. So I think we got comfortable. And so the challenge of our men, like Father Benedict, Father Andrew, and the early founders um, recognized that and recognized the need for renewal, recognized the need for conversion, really. And, and so they were able to first boldly take a step out um, a, as a group and, and really kind of responding again to what the Holy Spirit was doing, but then recognizing that um, they could only control what they could control. And so instead of trying to change the whole church, instead of trying to change, you know, all, all the main issues in the church, they got together and they just decided to live the Franciscan Renewal and Reform uh, as a group. And, and first starting with themselves, right? And so we always say in our constitutions that re renewal is first personal and then it's communal. And then that affects that fruit of those, the personal communal renewal then affects the church and affects the neighborhood and affects mm -hmm. the places in, in which we live. And so our guys really responded to this and really tried to change themselves first, 
changed what their the, what that was happening in the friary it changed how they prayed changed how they loved one another changed the community life the gift of putting our brothers first and the gift of offering ourselves in sacrifice for the other and then the, the gift of of not being afraid to live and work with the poor and to be um and it's beautiful because we know our our and we talk about this oftentimes too the experience of working with the poor keeps us humble. And so when we want to change, we first have to be humble. And I think our, our, our community um, in the eighties, in particular late eighties experienced that the humility of Francis, we don't have all the answers, but we're going to try to do our best. Mm-hmm. We're going to try, try to be faithful to this particular blueprint that the Holy spirit has given us. And here we are in 2020, still trying to do that, still recognizing that there's a lot of challenges in the world and there's a lot of questions and a lot of doubts and a lot of like, what in the world is going on? And our community is still proposing the same answer. Hey, it's right here first. It's he's, right he's in my- point, He's I'm pointing to his heart. I'm pointing at Father Innocent first. It's right here yeah. first. <laughs> hey, take it easy. But it's right in my own heart first and in own my life. I mean, if I can be faithful to my prayer, if I can be faithful to my brothers and I can be faithful to the Lord asking me to do in my apostolate, then then I can change. Mm-hmm. And then and then the world can change. And so here we are trying to trying to make that balance. But renewal- um, a lot of people said that you guys are full of it. There's no way this is going to be fruitful. There's no way this is going to be possible. And there's no way that this, this is going to work. And those guys took a huge risk. And so renewal, reform, conversion, healing is always a risk. It's always taking a step out because like we're going to get to it. It, it is God's initiative. It is God's work. And it's, it's, it's a huge project. <laughs> my own personal reform is a huge project, but the uh, reform in our community, reform in the church, reform in families, it's a huge project. But what do we, we have to take a step. And our community had, a, had enough boldness and hopefully bearing fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that I hit it. I think you did a good job. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you passed, you passed, uh, <laughs> C, you, you passed CFR history class. Wow. <laughs> you are an authentic religious. That was good. Yeah, that's been, good. That's good. Here yeah. we are. Uh, so I, I start here. This is, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna talk about this book, Habits for Holiness, quite a bit because I feel strongly enough about it to talk about it, even though I'm. You are with the it. author. He's the author. But that's like that's what makes me like the most like uncomfortable ever. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> but but the, how the because basically there's this thing is like I start with the story of the friars in the South Bronx, where at that time in '87 um, that area was called Fort Apache because it felt like a war zone, and so there's 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 drug dealers, there's there's gang violence, there's burnout buildings there's crime like off like just kind of off the charts and it's a mess and this is where god called these eight men we had eight founders to begin this new renewal and it's like okay this is the context and this is the environment and it's it's absolutely horrific but they 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 followed the lord they took the risk with nothing but themselves and the lord and their convictions and then they started living an intentional life they started living um they, 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 they developed a way of life and a structure that involved prayer and community and all this sort of stuff. And it was fruitful and it was fruitful. And why, why I think that's important is because people who can look at the world or their own worlds can feel like it's one big Fort Apache. It's like, this is a, this is a mess. And the temptation is like, I'm just going to give up. I'm going to be discouraged. Like this is possible. But, but the Lord has always, he's turned, he turns deserts into places of streams of water and he does other stuff he makes dry bones alive like the lord can bring new life where there's not life he can bring fruitfulness out of barrenness but we got to cooperate um it's possible but it's got to be intentional it's got to be a response and so i just think that the the, the testimony of our founders and, and the community this is like what this is what we have the off the world it's like okay that's 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 there's a lot going on out there but you can still do it you can still do it it is possible and it is fruitful and it's worth doing now jackie if you could if you could share a little bit now of just your own personal witness, testimony of reform, of renewal. Um, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was interesting because when I had my uh, practice in California, it was, it was just me. Um, I was a holistic nutritionist and functional medicine practitioner, which I still am. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I was out there and I was helping people um, again, from all different walks of life. And they were wanting to, um, continue with me after I felt like we maybe should be done with our, their journey a couple of months, um, giving them the tools that they need to, you know, lift heavier or move faster or eat healthier, um, reach their basic, you know, health goals that we would define health as the physical person only. And it was through witnessing their desire to work more deeply with me, um, where I had to kind of ask Jesus while I was in my own kind of conversion of like, 
why do they want more? Um, and it was at the same time where I was um, actually traveling, traveling back and forth from California to New York. Often, um, one of my sisters was going through um, a, a divorce, um, and it was really, really difficult um, uh, time. And her first response to the situation was um, to put Christ at the center of her life and her children's lives. And Every time I visited New York, um, even though her situation um, was was devastating, um, her lifestyle was was incredibly challenging. I wanted what she had, and what she had was Christ at the center of her life and of her family's life. And um, so I would go back to California a little bit more, like desiring to put Christ at the center. I was going to to you know weekly mass and. Uh, But I still could feel like there was more, there was more, there was more. So every time I went back, I would make more changes to put him at the center. And I realized it wasn't just at the center of my faith life. um, It was the center of everything from the way that I ate to the way that I moved to the way that I dressed to my relationships. I mean, literally everything. And so I started to overhaul my life. Um, and also, <laughs> I mean, that's like a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> overhaul my life. <laughs> but, but, but little by little, I am poco a poco. There you go. Um, yeah, there. <laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. <laughs> um, but I, I really, honestly, it was little by little because when I tried to think about it as the whole, it was overwhelming. And then I wanted to, I did have the temptation, as you just mentioned, uh, in the war zone to, to just give up, to say, this is too much. Uh, this is not for me. This is for those other people, um, but not for me. And once I was able to really receive the grace, it was in adoration um, to say, um, I can't do this, but you can through me. And so I trust you, Jesus, to do this, um, but I really need you. And I, it's almost like I felt him saying, well, like I'm here. I've actually been here the whole time. And now that you want me there, um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be here the whole time. And so that trickled into my work as well. I knew that I couldn't, you know, leave him out of the center of a wellness practice because in order for me to be well, I learned that I needed him uh, more than anything. And then I brought him into the center of reform. And that's, um, it was, yeah, it was actually meeting Father Innocent. So my practice was called Jackie Mulligan. It was just me. Um, Thank God that's over. (laughs) Uh, But then I met um, Father Innocent here. And when it was, it was actually through observing the postulants in their formation, obediently doing um, doing things every day to to form into new men um, with new names. Literally, uh, at the end of the year, I watched them in formation reform into these incredible men, and that was that's the namesake for for our ministry, and um, that's really where it came from. Can you share just a little bit more? Because it sounds like was that starting point? You were in California. The yep. starting point was was a desire. What was the what was that? Well, just real quick, we um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our friary where there is this maintenance is, work going on. This is Franciscan life. I tried to do like a live rosary the other day, and I was like, in your office, the phone's ringing. There's construction outside. It's like <laughs> real life. Yeah, it's real life. Do. And we have some somebody. I don't know what they were doing, drilling something down, in the basement. Down so. in the basement. Father so, Glenn always says, "Religious life is life. Mm-hmm. This is life. life. This yeah. is life. And it's good. We don't want to be too protected, too safe. That's kind of the idea, oh, we right? Don't, yeah. We don't want to be safe, all pretty. You know what I mean? We want to be where the people are at." Um, we want to be just in the mix. So as, as you're in California and it sounds like, is there the starting point? It's like, it's a desire. It's an awareness. What's that? Can you just go a little bit into what, what was happening interiorly there? Like, yeah. why did, why did you make that next step really? Well, first it was awareness. I think it was, um, that I needed some work physically. Um, I didn't even know it at the time, but I was struggling with Lyme's disease. So I had an autoimmune condition that I was fighting, um, which I thought was adrenal fatigue, being totally stressed and run down. Um, and it was all of those things uh, that I think one led to the other. And then um, and then a combination of, of uh, just knowing that my soul needed some work as well. And that um, first I had awareness of like, okay, I have some growing to do. I'm not really sure how to do it. And that was intimidating and almost kept me complacent um, in a sense um, or comfortable uh, but actually it was really uncomfortable. It really, if we're being really honest, you know, if I, it, it was a really uncomfortable place to be because I was tolerating things that became a new normal in my life that actually weren't healthy um, or, 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 or normal uh, that, that shouldn't be normal in the sense of, of a living fully alive and, and receiving his, um, his grace to live life in abundance. So um, I slowly started then having this desire, which I think I always had, but it was allowing myself to feel the desire and to lean into the desire to say, yes, I I want more of you in my life. And so um, I was in a relationship at the time and um, it was when I I ended that relationship. um, I was on the phone with my sister who I mentioned earlier, Carrie, 
And she said, I just want you to promise me one thing. I just want you to keep taking these leaps, um, but I want you to have a holy hour every single day. And um, I did, I listened. Um, and that, I think, I don't think I've missed <laughs> many days since. And that was, that was several years ago. Um, <clears throat> but I was sandwiched between two adoration chapels, Eucharistic um, adoration chapels. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The guy literally just whispered to me, could I make a little noise downstairs? <laughs> I, I was going to say no, but I didn't think that's not a little noise. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, just a little, just a little jackhammer. <laughs> just, a little, just a little jackhammer. Like, I don't think there's a difference. I mean, she was like, there was like this, we're getting to the holy hour, like the, the daily, like, and then. <laughs> I feel like let's, let's like spin this a little bit. I feel like that's exactly what's going on inside of my heart. Sometimes when the Maybe Lord this works, was going so. on in Jackie's heart. <laughs> this like, actually, yeah. this was really going on in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Paul, Paul Mark still doesn't know what to do. Well, I think I'm, I'm enjoying that this is happening. I hope we can keep this in. But this is, this is perfect. You know why? Because this is what God does when we allow him to knock down our walls. Oh, yeah. oh come, like, on. come on. <laughs> I'm going to knock down this one. I'm putting up a, a tower here. It's C.S. Lewis's quote, oh, um, the man. divine builder. And that's, I think, what it was happening in the moment that yeah. I just paused in the, in the, in the story. Um, this was an incarnational experience. Like she was talking about it and we had, we had sound effects. <laughs> But the beautiful thing about California, I think, as as you well know, Father Mark Mary, is that there are perpetual chapels um, everywhere uh, that you can go and visit the Lord in adoration. And so I found myself not only wanting like one hour, it was like, I, how long can I sit here? Um, and mm-hmm. I went through, um, I just... I just sat there uh, with him often. I didn't really know, even know, understand how to pray uh, fully. Um, but then I grew so much closer to him and Our Lady, and I just wanted more. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought um, so much so to the point where it was like, okay, maybe maybe I'm called to religious life because like, I really love him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is captivating and pulling me in. Um, but then it was, it's transitioned from awareness to desire of like, okay, I'm aware of where I am and that's okay. And, and he knows he's actually known the whole time where I am now. I, I want him in and I want, uh, I have this desire to have him in, in every aspect. So that, that kind of started the journey back, um, resisting coming back to New York. I wanted to stay in California. Um, but my family is here. Um, I'm one of, of seven and we've got a big pack. Um, and, uh, and also I knew that there was something here, um, that I left that it was almost like unfinished business. Um, and I I didn't know what it was. Um, and now I think I learned that it was reform. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this was how long of a, how long ago was that kind of beginning? I came back to, oh, the beginning moment was kind of with, yeah, yeah. in California with your sister. Uh, It was between 2015 and 16. Okay. So it's about what, four or five year period? Has change happened in your life in those four or five years? You know, just slightly. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually a total overhaul yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Because again, that's kind of what we want to submit here is this like this hope, like this is possible. Oh yeah. And it's it's worth it. Um, Father Innocent, do you want to, Father Innocent works again with the postulants in formation and your kind of work really is kind of helping to address some of the foundational questions, issues to like grace build on nature, to kind of lay that foundation, heal up some of that foundation as well with the Lord. Just some, some, because I think that's really where I almost want this phase of our podcast to be like postulancy a little bit. You know, where it's <laughs> it like, is though. If yeah. you're starting at this point, it is where it's like, okay, you're serious, like you're in, or you're kind of you're ready, you're you're open, like okay, like here's let's 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 talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I love you know, I love this stuff. I love it. Um, and I think I I picked up a lot a lot of on in Jackie's terminology and words and you can tell we work a lot together <laughs> because it's the same things that i that i use but i think <clears throat> there's an invitation that the lord gives us right the lord creates the space and you were open jackie was open to this happening in her life and so the lord creates a space in our life the passions come here and there's there's an openness and there's a space and i think i think we just have to to give him permission like you there was a moment when you said okay lord like i'm 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 in i'm open and i, I give you the space in my life and not only do I give you my like this part of my life and that part of my life, but you you have to you have to be invited on a journey to be kind of all in. Like everything's at play here because I think that's what happens in the in the in the Christian life often is that we like we get just focused on one thing. Like I'm going to really do this right, and I'm going to read this book and it's going to be fine. Or like the New Year's resolutions, we get, we get kind of fixated on one thing. But I oftentimes I think think the Lord is like, well, let's talk about that right, and be like 
kind of points in your heart in these different areas. And and so one thing I like about about Jackie's whole experience and the and the way we do formation here is it just really moves my heart that we 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 invite guys on this pretty radical journey to like just to let go and to be all in for the Lord and to say, okay, like I'm gonna give you every part of my life. Right, because formation doesn't work if I hold myself back. It, formation doesn't work if I if I if I build up walls and these types of things. And and so, um, I the, the the invitation we give the men from day one is that can you be open? Can you let go? Can you and can you go on the journey to become radically aware of what's going on in your heart? Because those are where the desires are going to to spring up. And guys, we know this. <laughs> Sp- speaking of springing up. Um, we know this is that we have to put ourselves in, we have to have an invitation to come face to face with what we really want, what we really desire. Right. Um, the guys were, the guys were on Christmas break. Right. And we had a couple talks before they went home and, and I just invited him like, what do you want? As consecrated men, when you go home, like you are going to get, to get up every day and make decisions that reflect what you really want in your life. And if you want to be consecrated to Jesus, your life's going to look a certain way. If you want to be healthy, if you want to be happy, if you want to be joyful, if you want to live in this freedom, you're gonna, your life's gonna like your your life's gonna reflect that, right? So, in, an invitation to formation is to say, okay, I am totally aware of what's going on in my life, or totally, or the 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 striving to, and then we we let our desires just kind of spring up, and then we become men and women of desire, and then our whole life can take 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 shape around this, and mm-hmm. so it's it's a daily invitation, it's a daily reformation, right? And uh, old habits die hard. (laughs) Like, you know, so uh, there's an invitation not to be afraid of the messiness. (laughs) You're looking at me like, I'm just just taking it in. I'm enjoying it. I apologize. This is perfect. I apologize to the audience. You know, you want authenticity. You want authenticity. We're talking about rebuilding here. This is, this is, we couldn't have have a better background here. But it might hurt sometimes when the Lord like takes a, take a jack, jackhammer to the heart. Um, We, uh, we, we just don't, we, we just have to recognize that sometimes we're afraid and sometimes our hearts still hurt. Right. Um, we talk about that story of our nieces and nephews, like, you know, show me where it hurts. Like mm. Lord often for me in reformation and it's like, okay, like you had, there's an infection still in this place in your life, in your heart, in your, in this relationship or this, my past. Right. So like, all right, guys, tell me where it hurts. Mm. And then Jesus is like, well, let's talk about that. Like, what about that? And he points to places. Are, and so it's a daily invitation to trust the Lord, to let go, and I think become just more and more aware of what we, what we really desire. Mm-hmm. And if you, you can get these guys to live from this place of desire and, 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 and radical love from, for Jesus and, and, and to receive it from Jesus, that will sustain the rest of their life. I think I've also just one of the things that I realized in, in my resistance to wanting to, to make this complete overhaul or to move back to New York I didn't even know my heart the way that you're describing, you know, and it was once I, when I finally did, I had, I had to realize that it was even more I had to go into and that I just had to keep trusting and taking that risk and taking that step forward. And it was each little breadcrumb that he would give to me and say, I can't show you this whole path right now. It's going to overwhelm you. And if you were to tell me five years ago that I would have gone down to this journey, even though I'm so grateful and I'm, I couldn't be happier of where I am. Um, it was a long road and it was windy. <laughs> um, and so I think the the point of, um, of saying yes, uh, is, is not just, yes, I'm going to overhaul my life right now. It's yes. I know that you uh, are going to reveal the desires of my heart to me in full and that, you know, the desires better than I know my own. And that's the coolest part is because the, the landing point of the things that made me happy actually weren't the things that I thought were going to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. One of the things I just would appreciate about Jackie's story and Father Innocent said this too, we know it's the key. <clears throat> it sounds like I have a weird voice, raspy. Um, is you just knew and continually received encouragement because you just knew you weren't alone, that God was there. And it's easier to do harder things. It's easier to face the pain. It's easier to face what's going on inside of me when I know I'm loved by him. And I have people around me that are loving me. And so I think the postulants do well here because they're introduced to this radical relationship that they have with God. And then everything's in that context. And you said numerous times and just in telling us your story that like, I went to him and he's like, I'm here. And that's really the only way, right? Mm. Is that we can do all these things. We can face the interior hurts and challenges and we can ask the big questions because we know we're not alone. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why, uh, yeah, that's why it's okay. Yeah. I can face this stuff, you know? There, there's a funny thing that we, we say in postulancy where it's like, uh, we, we really want, you, this is like Jackie's language, we said it, we give people a team, like a family to like support them. And so I always say that like, I have a lot of weaknesses and you can criticize me, but one thing you cannot say is that like I was lonely or like I didn't provide the support you need. <laughs> Cause like, that's like my deepest desire is that when I, you invite guys on this invitation to formation is that they have real tangible people in their life that point them back to the Lord and remind them who they are. So it's, it's, so this invitation is like, is relationships. And so we, that's, a, that's what we try to surround the guys with, that they're at least four or five people in their life that are radically invested in, in their formation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a part of it too, is that God breaks in and says, hey, listen, this is a family. There's friendships and people that are going to love you back to life. You're not going to leave postulancy because no one paid attention to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that that's like zero. There's <laughs> no reason. The <laughs> yeah, you take it. You might like, again, I have a lot of weaknesses. Like, that's not the point. But the point is, is that there's an, an incredible intentionality that this experience of renewal and formation happens in this context of family and relationships. And, and this is what God does for us, I think. And it's pointing us, all those relationships point us back to the Lord, point us back to his, the, the reality of his presence in our lives. All right. So what I, this, I want to kind of set the, the stage for kind of, the, if you will, the, the remnant of, of the episode. And second, Father Angel, I'll ask you to, to share again kind of your own story about being boring. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll come back to, to, to Jackie to share some, like just kind of the concrete get into the nitty gritty a little bit. But just again, to kind of um, paint a bit of a picture. I think, you know, we, we've talked about a lot, like it's okay if you're not okay, but it's also okay if you want to be okay. You know, it's <laughs> like- wow, that's, I like that. Say know, it again. Say it one more time for me. I like listen that. up. I'm going to listen pause. I'm gonna, I need to do the father innocent. He like closed his eyes. And, it's, okay, it's like okay. the homie. He's making fun of my homies now. Not your homilies, just your, we just all have things that we do. I talk with my eyes closed. Um, it's okay if you're not okay, but it's also okay if you want to be okay. And I think it's First Thessalonians says, may the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May he preserve you spirit, soul, and body irreproachable at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord wants you to be healthy and he wants you to be happy and he wants you to be holy. And okay, maybe we're not there yet, but like... Because you, you shared a little bit about some folks you work with who maybe they're like addicted to like stress or something like that. It's like, well, you don't have to live that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a better way. Right. <laughs> and so if you're, you're stressed out, you're not healthy, you're not praying, you're not in control, like, okay, all right, the Lord can meet you there and he's there to, but it's also like, let's, like, you don't have to live that way. There's another way to live. I flourish in that though, Jackie. <laughs> I flourish in stress. I'm, the guy, I'm the guy when things, get, everybody, not that when, things go, when things go crazy and the community's on the brink. There needs to, like that's where I step up. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's where I'm in my prime, Jackie. That's the addiction to the stress. I know, that's what I mean. I know. There's like something happens when like when I have responsibility that keeps me up till midnight. I'm like, oh yeah, this yeah. is how we live. I love waking up at three in the morning and not being able to sleep because of everything I have to do. And I love, I love just going super hard and then crying Friday night because I'm so tired and everything's falling apart. Like, That's Father Angel. I'm, jo- I'm 70% joking. <laughs> yeah. I, but part of that is I do thrive in that and that's weird. It's probably not good for me. Anyway, I'm just being vulnerable. I know, I know, I know somebody who can help you with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're looking at me. <laughs> Um, She's taking notes. It's weird. There's, <laughs> there's a um, what was what were we gonna say? Sorry, that was a little there's obvious. A, there's, <laughs> there's a one of the psalms which basically said like the um, like on on your heart is written the road design or something like that. There's one of the psalms that has something like that, and what it speaks to me is like like those like you have these desires, like the Lord's given you some God given desires for Him and to draw mm-hmm. you to Him, and we want to pay attention to those and, and we want to take those serious. But also we want to ask for the grace to believe that those desires can be fulfilled. Amen. Like that the Lord really does have a plan for you um, and for the fullness of life. And like I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. Like that's a real, th- that's a real thing. And that's possible. It requires, particularly with the Lord's help, getting in touch with that desire and allowing even just the Holy Spirit to get it in there and to, and to fan it into flame. Um, it also takes like some change. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Like the friars, you know, like, the, in, in the beginning, like, okay, we need to make a change. And and all of us have had some very significant changes in our lives. Um, and there's and there's a risk, 
and there's a conf- confronting of the <clears throat> doubts or the temptation to say like it's not going to happen right so the so the brothers when they started this new thing like this was a huge risk they were leaving an established 500 year old uh, religious order to start something new in the south bronx like that's a big risk and also there was a ton of people like that's not going to work no one's going to follow you nobody's going to want that like that that phase of the church has passed and then like five years later they had a class of 20 guys who joined or something like that um and what I, where I want to contextualize this or where I want to, to found this in the scriptures is the story of St. Peter and when Jesus invites him to walk on water. Because, right, so there's a, there's a storm going on. And that's, again, that's like the Ford Apache context. That's the world right now. Like there's, there's this storm going on and Jesus comes and Jesus comes and he comes walking on the water because he is the Lord and he is God and he can do and he can he can do it. Right. Like you even said, Jack, like I, I, I need you to do it. And like the Lord can do it. And so you see him out there on the water and you're like, dang that's kind of attractive. That's like, that's something new. And Lord, if that's you, just, just call me and I'll come walking out of the water. And he says, come. And this is the thing that Peter has to do. There's this, there's like, okay, I want that. There's a stepping out of the boat, but there's also like, I have to, I have to be focused on Jesus. And I have to believe the promise of Jesus and the potential of Jesus is more powerful than my own memory. I have to think it's more powerful than my own capacity to judge. Like, like he's walking on water and he is God and he is the one that calls me. And if I stay focused on him, this radical change and conversion is, it's, it's really, really, truly possible. And there's one, I think, one temptation to discouragement and one way in which the devil is going to try to get in there for people is past. It's like, it's always been this way. It's always going to be this way. But like, that's a lie. And let's send that lie back to hell. And with, with St. Peter's, there's this thing of like, bro, I've, I've lived my whole life. I'm 30, whatever he is, 35, I'm 40 years old and I'm a fisherman. And my entire life, I've seen people sink in water. I've never seen anyone who's been able to walk on water. Everyone who's put all of their weight on water has gone down. <laughs> and Jesus says, like, okay, I'm doing something new. Like, behold, I make all things new. And I'm even going to make this this new. And it can feel like change in our life is as radical as walking on water. But if we stay focused on Jesus, like, we can do it. And Peter gets in trouble because he takes his eyes off Jesus and he starts the doubts start and he starts entertaining the doubts and he starts entertaining the history and all that sort of stuff. It's like, like brothers and sisters, let's, let's, let's get in touch with that desire for magnanimity, for holiness. Um, let's, let's actually want to be okay. Even if we're not okay. Um, and as Jesus invites us, let's take those risks and let's just stay focused on him for the journey. Um, I think that's, that's kind of the, the spiritual, place I want us to begin and, and a place where we can sort of found this. Father Angelus, you were telling us a story of when you were in college and you were, you were kind of hanging out in the boat. <laughs> you were playing it a little bit safe, maybe a little bit boring, some might say. Wow. wow. <laughs> what happened? Here's the thing. I am a spoiled brat. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I was I was just doing everything I wanted to do in college. My goal was to get away from Father Innocent when I went to college. <laughs> I went to seminary. I was the one who like, you know, just took the Lord serious right out of high school. And that gave me every excuse that I needed. And so I went to college and uh, had a wonderful experience, but that was an opportunity for me to kind of do anything that I ever wanted to do in in a good way. So I was student body president. I was played football. I just did my thing. I think we probably talked about that on this before, but part of my own personal walk with the Lord was, is that my, I was very comfortable with the Lord, but it was very much, I'll go to adoration every day and go to mass every day, but I'm in control and I'm going to be self-reliant and and do my own thing. It looked really good. I think that was, that's what made it interesting is it looked really good. And so I had this conversion, but this conversion all happened within the course of a few months. And one of the stories that happened in this conversion, um, a a guy who I still uh, keep in contact with, we were in our dorm room and, I was kind of going through something. And so it was interiorly, he kind of had seen that. And he was like, what's going on, bro? And I was just, I kind of laid it out there. I was just like, I just feel like the, the Lord wants more for me. And I feel like I'm, I'm it, it's just never enough. And I, it was dating and it was this and that, you know, time out. Just like the, the deeper desire of my heart that now I can point back to is I always wanted to do something radical for the Lord. And I always read the lives of the saints and wanted to be a saint. Like that was just kind of like underneath everything. So when I was kind of doing my own spoiled thing, it was just so much beneath what I actually desired. And now looking back that I, I can see that I was like, I totally like just playing it safe. So anyway, he calls me out like in this, in this moment of like where I'm just being transparent and vulnerable. He just kind of said, you know what, bro, here's the thing is like, if they wrote a book about your life, this would just be a really boring chapter. 
And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is where you're supposed to support me. <laughs> this is where you're supposed to encourage me. Where you're supposed to be like, oh, I know, isn't this a tough time? <laughs> no, like he totally called me out. And it was because of that. He was like, because you're, you're self-centered right now. And you're making this all about you. And again, you're doing everything right on the outside. But every, everything that you're doing is about you. And, and that's why my, I think my, my own... They, a word that the really the Lord kind of gives me often to preach is this getting over our self-centeredness and getting over our ego and getting over the stuff that keeps us trapped in our in ourselves and in control of what's going on in our lives because that was where I was at. This is what like the moment where I realized that I was not letting the Lord into these other places in me because I was doing quite well, I thought, you know? And so it was boring and it was safe and it was comfortable. And those are real enemies to holiness. Those are real enemies for us to, to be able to be healthy because I, there was no reason. And, and you know, most people probably would have told you, oh, like he's doing his thing. Look at that. But there was, there was something off. Mm -hmm. And I had a good friend who just kind of said, yeah, because you're self-centered. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh. So it, <laughs> it was really, it was really beautiful. But that, that within the course of a few months was this opportunity for me, along with a good priest friend, and a couple other good friends that just to really kind of say like, I need to let the Lord mm -hmm. into other places in my life. And that is when my call to religious life came up after that. My call to be a priest That's is right. when I was Was I one to, of those friends that kind of like, up? Yeah. you were in a mission. You were not around at all. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I was praying for you. Before we kick it off to Jackie, I think there was a number, because I just thinking in my own life, like the moment that everything changed was when I realized the Lord, the Lord wanted everything mm -hmm. and that I was, I was keeping a lot from him. And there's an idea of like the Lord being like a, a jealous lover. Like he wants it all. Mm -hmm. um, what's that? Uh, how's that song go? Because I want it all or nothing at all. Did anyone know this? I got uh, nothing for you. From, um, not from Grace Showman. I have mm -hmm. no idea. I don't think so. Can I, can I just, I, I wish Father PT was here. He would know. He'd oh, do something yeah, because cool. yeah, he's cool. He yeah, that's what happens. Do you know about these guys matching Rascal Flats oh. tattoos? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my whoa, whoa, they're, whoa, whoa. They're, they're a twin. So he's got Rascal on, on his back and Father Andrew's he's got flats. Or in making so when they go, up. When, <laughs> when they go to the beach, so it's just Rascal Flats. It's really cool. Can I just really? get back to something that's yeah, more important than my Rascal Flats tattoos? <laughs> you don't have a I Rascal Flats tattoo. I have no tattoos. Stick to the script. So, <laughs> Spice Girls. I don't yeah. know if you've said this, Jackie, but this is something that you would say. So I'm just going to ask before we kick it off to you. This was a moment in my life where it's like, Things are really good, but the Lord wants them to be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, is it all of us? Because it wasn't mortal sins and it wasn't wow. living the life out at the bars. It wasn't living the life that that a lot of people struggle with. And so like, that's why I feel like I was a spoiled, like spiritual brat. Like I, I didn't struggle with those things, but then my self-centeredness and my ego became this place where I made it all about me and mm -hmm. didn't allow Jesus to come into it. Mm -hmm. So my life was good, but we're, we're called right. to allow the holiness means our life is is on a whole nother level encountering the Lord. Yep. And I think a lot of our listeners, and God bless us all because we we're all there. It's, I, even in my own experience in life right now, my life is good a lot, but the Lord wants more than that. Mm -hmm. And so what does it mean to yep. allow our lives to, to be better? And what does yep. it mean for the, the allow the Lord to become yeah. more to yeah. us rather than- Yeah, we'll really flesh it out next episode, but that's the, like, love is the nexus from me to you. That's Pope Benedict. And it's like all of me to you. He wants it all. Mm -hmm. He does. Uh, all right. So Jackie, get us into some of the, the mechanics, like maybe help us um, first step, next step, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I was also a spoiled brat. That's good to, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> this bound. Uh, this, this bound. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think the first step is going to be awareness, right? So really radical um, posture in actually, Father An Angelus, you said this earlier, in humility, and also mm. honesty of where am I really right now? Where's my physical person? What, what's, what is the state of my body? Like, how am I doing? And then also um, the state of, of our soul. Um, like we would do an examination of conscious before confession, but like really going deep and giving yourself uh, an idea of what you do um, every day, every week, every month, every year that makes you healthier and, and closer to the person you know that God truly intended you to be, and then the things that you do that pull you farther away. Um, and we all know them, like even as I'm saying that, like we're, our like initial tendency is to say, oh, okay, these are, these are the holes, these are the places. And the human tendency is to cling, like, but, uh, but, but like, we're not gonna talk about that and you're not gonna take that away and I'm definitely not changing this. Hmm. Um, so we have to have an awareness of where we are. And then the next step is understanding where we want to go. So mm. if we put Christ at the center and we really were able to put um, our 
fear aside and take that risk as if we were to say, okay, I see Jesus walking on the water. Um, and, and I believe that every man has actually sunk every time he's tried to do this. So I have to take this risk and believe. Um, and then I have my eyes on him. I'm going to keep my gaze on him. What does that look like? Like who do I know he intended me to be? And so I'll have people that I work with write out totally without any boundaries. <coughs> what do you look like, feel like, act like when you have Christ at the center and you are actually the person you know he intended you to be, what does that look like? And getting really, really clear on that and being descriptive and not holding back, uh, going big and knowing like, okay, we're going to say Christ is Christ. He's walking on water. Like, what is he going to be able to do in your life? And this is where the tears come in. This is where all the drills actually did their job perfectly (laughs) in this episode, because that's where he gets to say, okay, you're ready. Because you, as C.S. Lewis says, like you thought you're being made into this decent little cottage, but actually we're going for the palace. Um, and so having this idea of what we want to look like, like beginning with the end in mind, but also where we are and then allowing him to bridge the gap. And he will, we just have to put him at the center because he's going to bridge the gap from where we are to where we want to be. He's got to do it. I love how you say that. Like, this is not like a human endeavor. No, this is an I will do it. That's where we fail. Like Father Angelus and I just said that. Like, you know, we I were, rock that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I made that look so good. <laughs> I was exhausted. This is why I, st- I got so sick. I know it because I was totally self-reliant. I was, you know, high achiever and and totally capable and, and did a lot. And it was great, except for I was exhausted and burnt out and totally doing it on my own. I was doing a lot of the right things. Mm-hmm. I was just burnt out. And he didn't even want that. He wasn't even allowing, like I wasn't allowing him in to show me the beautiful desires that I had and also to to be totally authentic and alive in him. I was doing all these things. I wasn't fully alive. Mm. And that's where we want um, we want to be. That's how he designed us to be. Beautiful. My, my primary hope or um, request of our audience is that you stick with us because I think we want, we want to go on a journey with them. And mm-hmm. that's like this whole pilgrimage uh, paradigm, which is what we're kind of coming at with this, this podcast. It's like we want that to be real. And if you, if you stick with us for the next, honestly, like this is like a couple month journey, I think we're beginning. Like if you stick with us, like we're going to walk you through this and we're going to keep encouraging you and keep helping you make the next best steps. And because this is like, this is, this is a long game and, and it is poco a poco. It is little by little. Um, but but for this episode, our, our primary objective, my primary goal was just to just both to to communicate like authentic hope and, and desire in particular. Like, okay, this this is possible. This is possible. And it is actually what the Lord wants for you. <coughs> he wants you to be healthy and happy and holy, and he wants you to be thriving and fully alive. And part of your sure certainly like it's um what's the quote I always have you do about it? Like it's it's the love of Jesus that defines you and your capacity to live like Him. What's that whole quote? It's from God of Mitzpes. Or no, it. Uh, we do this we every, do this every time. time. You <laughs> bring <laughs> it to you, it's, it's like, uh, no, it's, a, it's that's it. it's from World Youth Day. But okay, what it's, is the quote? Um, but yeah, I always forget it. This is you putting me on the spot. Um, basically said it's the capacity to become. This, like, okay, this is the image of his son. Yeah, you're not, it's not like you're not defined by your, 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 your sins and your weakness, weakness, but by the father's love for you and your capacity to live like his son. son. And so this is like, it's okay if you're not okay, but we want you to be okay. It's like, yeah, okay, this sin and this weakness, it doesn't define you, but your dignity is you're made in the image and likeness of God and you have the capacity and we created you, the Lord created you to live like his mm-hmm. son, like to actually have the divine life living in you and to be an imitator of Christ. Like that's, that's, that's the goal. That's where we Even if be. I can't remember the quote, we'll get that quote someday and write it out and be able to we read it. We talked about this like episodes ago and he's like, you remember that? I'm like, yeah, I, I, not really. I mean, I know that like the, the heart of it. I thought it was your thing. I thought yeah. that was your quote. Yours no, Gotta Be Says 22. Jesus Christ reveals man fully to himself. But, only in Jesus, Jackie. Only in Jesus. <laughs> oh, Mark Mary, uh, when Father Innocent said earlier about creating space, that's the the thing here is that <clears throat> maybe you don't know where you are right now. You're You're totally disconnected from yourself from others, from God, that's, that's even okay. Like it's okay to be there. Um, but that's this space even to just allow a little bit of space for God to even start planting the seed or to, to, he's already planted it for us to know that he's planted it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, to receive this desire and awareness, but the, the space of being able to create space physically in your body, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, which we'll go into, um, but also the space to have awareness of where you want to, to go but to allow him to use you as a dwelling place. So could our invitation for the, for the folks who are listening this week in this next week, as we prepare to, to take another step next week is, is just to take some space. Yeah. I think um, that's, that's the only thing that, yeah. that could be the, 
next best step. And so we'll invite the Lord into that space. And I think we want, uh, we want Christ to come in to do two things, right? To, to, we want to look with him at our desires. Like, what do you really want? What do you really want? And, and the second is where, where are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, do they want to be in a construction zone? Like, like we were today and honestly yeah. say like, can you, can you come in and do the work honestly? Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and will you, and then he's saying it right back to us. Um, will you let me Amen. and are you ready? Beautiful. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready to close us with a prayer, Father Angelus? I, love, I love praying. <laughs> the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, Lord, for yeah, making this space. Thank you for regardless of whatever we want, Lord. Thank you for first taking the initiative. Thank you for first loving us, first pursuing us. We give you our hearts, Lord. We give you uh, whatever desire is there to have you come in and do beautiful things, Lord. Thank you for Jackie. Thank you for the good she does. Lord, thank you for allowing her to be a part of this time. Lord, continue to give us the good news that it's possible to experience new life in you. We ask that you just help us to be a little more open today to this grace and to this truth. And we pray this, Jesus, in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, folks, if we we have the, the book, A Work of God, Images for Renewal, you can find it on our website, franciscanfriars.com slash poco poco. I think it's a beautiful tool and it can be a source of ongoing encouragement and it can, I think it can stir up some, some of the desires in your heart if you want to check that out. Um, coming up, I think it's after, I think it's February 4th, you can start to pre-order the book I did with Ascension. It's called Habits for Holiness. It's almost like a handbook for holiness. Like we're just going to be working through that to help you like develop this structure and help kind of keep, keep growing, keep making the next best step. Where would, would be the best place if they want to learn a little bit more about reform and what you're doing, Jackie? You can go to our website. It's reformwellness.co. Reformwellness.co. Check it out. And most importantly, keep praying, make some space for the Lord and come on back next week. Little cool. by little by little, everybody. Poco, poco. Peace, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Spirit Jesus. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. Peace. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love.